Hello and welcome to this webinar. I'm Lois McClucky, Head of Marketing for Hot Docs. Thanks for joining us today to hear about the seven deadly sins of document production. Um, if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the question pane in the GoToWebinar panel and type in anything you'd like to ask. We will respond to those questions at the end. Can I introduce you to today's pr presenter, Bart Basie? Bart is a technical consultant for Hot Docs and has worked with document management and production technologies for over 15 years. I will hand you over to Bart. Hi, this is Bart. I'm a technical engineer with Hot Docs and as Lois said, I've been doing this for a long time. The seven deadly sins of document production. First thing is brand evolution in multiple brands. And this is a common thing that has faced customer after customer that I've run into over the years, where either the organization changes, so the letterhead changes, the logo changes, could be as simple as a partner coming on, uh, you small changes all the way up to you're running multiple companies and legal needs to make sure they're using the right letterhead, etc., the right documentation for each company. Doing this with Word, there's a lot of steps that a human being has to take to make sure everything's correct. When you control this with hot docs, you take those decisions out of the loop. You set things up in hot docs, you identify the appropriate organization, or you make the single change to the letterhead in one place, and that change rolls out everywhere. So hot docs can completely eliminate any errors involving brand evolution or multiple brands that happen to everybody from time to time when they're simply using a word processor. Find and replace one of the most commonly used features of Microsoft Word. And I'm certainly not suggesting you get rid of it. We need it. I use it. But when we're talking about document assembly, using find and replace as a poor man's document assembly leads to errors. It doesn't have the ability to intelligently go in and selectively replace as needed, and that's where Hot Docs shines. Because when Hot Docs goes in to replace content or remove content and replace content, we do it in such a way that is accurate and controlled because we've taken the subject matter expertise that you have provided about your document, that intelligence has been wrapped into Hot Docs, and Hot Docs uses that to make a smart decision about how to replace content. There's a tremendous difference between how it works with document assembly and hot docs versus just control F in Word. Controlling numbers. On first glance, I get people who look at this and go, really, we don't have an issue with this. Well, when you look at controlling numbers, you gotta remember the details around the number. A missed comma is huge, and a missed term or condition on a number is equally huge. Two years ago in the U.S. Supreme Court, there was a case. An American company was selling coal. A German company was buying it. It was a lot of coal. The contract ran over 50 pages. However, they had never specified whether they were buying and selling a U.S. ton or a metric ton. American company thought they were getting the deal of a lifetime, so did the Germans. In the end, nobody was terribly happy. They could have avoided all of that, the amazing amount of legal fees, with proper document assembly, which takes the intelligence that you have as a subject matter expert in your document and ensures that that intelligence is appropriately applied throughout the document so you never miss a dollar sign, you never miss a comma, and you never miss a term or condition. We eliminate a person having to think about that for every single individual document because you've only got to tell Hot Docs about it once, in one place, and everything you do after that is controlled. I don't think I've ever seen any organization that does not in one form or another use email or a shared drive for version control and version management, informally. The beauty of document automation is that there is a built-in version management system for every document you create, for every work item, for 
every individual aspect you can control who's creating the documents you can view documents by who's created them by who has access to them by what they're for and because hot docs does one thing only document automation we do nothing else we play well with others so if you have a formal document management system instead of leaving your documents in word outside of that hot docs makes it simple to integrate completely with your document management system as well as providing direct version control without changing your process so you still go into word for your document we change nothing on you and yet now you have proper version management on your documents tremendous time savings there every time you need to find something ad hoc editing everybody does this and it's fraught with problems what you need is a way to have separate people edit content but edit the right content and not touch the stuff they shouldn't hot docs does that for you because when you identify a document to hot docs as a template you teach hot docs what content is sacrosanct and can only be edited by an authorized person in one place at one time and what content may be changed moment to moment you gain complete control and at the same time you still allow the community to work together as a whole in a collaborative environment to produce the best into the best document possible so you get the best of both worlds with proper document assembly do you get the benefit of ad hoc editing with a collaborative environment and a group intelligence absolutely but you also get the control of a system to ensure that everything is correct copying pasting and reusing old documents I can say that I have never walked into a customer site where this was not happening prior to hot docs it's how we automate documents if we don't have hot docs and we change all of that one time and one time only you and your team are going to sit down and create the best possible document covering all bases and you're going to pour your corporate knowledge into hot docs and you're going to teach hot docs what matters what's relevant and how to use the content and from then on hot docs will assemble the document properly so no more double copying no more pasting over something that you actually needed and you thought you put the paragraph in and you did but you also covered up two sentences that you really kind of needed no more grabbing an older document and then realizing that there was a change and you meant to rewrite that because the court changed something never again hot docs ensures that all of the errors generated from copying pasting and reusing documents are gone at the same time it gives you the assurance and confidence that you're producing the best document possible macros in word are handy I like macros in word the catch is is that as soon as you start using them people say gee if only I could do this and if only I could do that and they start getting them very complex and macros weren't designed for that ever they're not designed for that today and they start to fall apart because the logic you can script into a macro is incredibly limited so if you're using macros that's a time when you absolutely need to look to hot docs which gives you the full-blown ability to make incredibly complex intelligent decisions on producing your document because macros scratch the surface of document assembly which can do so much more than a macro the other thing you get is you get a system designed for the complexity and the intelligence that your document assembly requires because right now you're assembling documents you're not using hot docs but you're building documents and you're using macros to automate tiny bits of that we can roll hot docs in and we can automate all of it I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by intelligence in a document in a second here now so that's the end of my deck now I'm going to bring up hot docs hot docs exists in a lot of forms you can get it on a tablet you can use it on your phone it certainly works fine on a desktop laptop computer 
fairly agnostic in terms of platform. We don't really care how you get to the product. So a user logs into Hot Docs and they see the work items that they have access to. And again, Hot Docs does one thing and we do that one thing very, very well. And that thing that we do so well here is we automate documents. So we'll integrate with your security system. If you have user authentication, we'll simply pick that up and roll with it. We'll pick up your groups and identification to know who's allowed to touch what. And if you don't, Hot Docs will handle it on its own. But Hot Docs plays well with others. So I've logged in here. The user I've logged in as is Tony Carbon. And Tony's got a list of the items that he's working on. The naming convention is your own. And at any time, you can click into a work item and take a look at everything in there, what's been done with the content that's in there, who created it, what's available for you to download. So this is a complete loan package. I completed a single interview, and Hot Docs generated five separate documents that I can download at any time. Talked a few minutes ago about version control. Down at the bottom, it says template used. It says lending package. And if you move your eyes over to the right, it says relaunch interview. Let's say we got something wrong. We typed something wrong in here. And all the validation that we did, we got some bad data in here. Spell the guy's name wrong. We relaunched the interview. We fixed the one error in the one place it occurred. And we're done. The system generates all new documents for me. And then I've got version control built in. Let's say we want to rerun this thing a year from now, but the law has changed slightly and our flood hazard notice has changed. We change the content of that in one place in the repository, and then we simply hit relaunch interview. We get a brand new notice of flood hazard with the right language. We don't have to touch anything else. Automatically generated, current and correct. So this is the Hot Docs basic interface. Get a list of your documents. You can download them. You can work with them. Now I'm going to create a brand new document. So I'm going to click my Create New Work Item button. I need to call it something. So I'm Bart, so this is a document for my client. And I'm going to create a will for them. And their name is going to be Pepper Potts. And I'm going to pick my simple will template. The templates that a user sees are controlled by security. Different users can be granted access to different sets of templates. Now all I do is launch my interview. The interview is a critical component of document assembly. We're not assembling the document yet, but before I assemble it, I need to have good data. How do I get good data? I get good data by asking good questions. <coughs> Excuse me, there are two ways to do this. One way is to have a system automatically generate everything, and Hot Docs does that. But far more importantly than that, Hot Docs allows you to go in and edit how the interview looks, the text used in the interview, the help text, the arrangement, the layout, the style. Everything is completely customizable. It matters a lot. Because what we want to do is we want to trans corporate knowledge transfer. I want the subject matter experts to sit down and put their document into Hot Docs using their combined years of experience. And then when a user fills out an interview, they don't need that experience. Because I've built that into the interview and I have guided my user with an intelligent interview. How intelligent? My questions during the interview will change based upon the answers given. When I hit marital status married, we're going to get a spouse block that pops up. I'm going to hit gender. Oops, let me find my mouse. There we go. And I'm going to fill in my demo answers. And I've just simulated pulling information in from an external source. You have a name. You have a name and phone number. You have whatever information you need. We can reach out to an external source, pull it in. So now I've completed an interview here and saved you the time of watching me type. And I can page through the interview. And as you can see over here on the side, it's going to step me through each separate section of the interview. How did the sections get there? Initially, Hot Docs made a decision on how they should break down. However, you have complete control without any programming, simple 
inner dialog boxes, click the buttons, and you can customize all of this to ensure you're getting good data in. How good? We can validate the data on each and every field. So on a date of birth, for example, simple validation on that is to put a time span of 100 years on it. If you've got a date of birth that's over 100 years old, you have a unique situation, and we can certainly handle uniques. But what I want to do is I want to validate my answers as best I can. I want to make sure I'm getting good data in. So I design my interview intelligently. I ask questions only when needed. So I never show a question to a user that I don't need. I add additional questions if the user answers something in such a way to cause me to have an additional question exactly the way you would do it if you were sitting across the desk and someone were filling out a form. This is a transfer of corporate knowledge. Why? Because once I've got that knowledge in the system, it'll never break. I'll never forget a comma. I'll never inappropriately copy and paste something in the wrong place. My versions will stay accurate. Let the computer do what it does best. And it's really great at those little details. What it's bad at is making the intelligent decision. So you teach it. And Hot Docs, more than anything, gives you an incredible platform to teach a machine how to build your documents with all the complexity that they have. And as I page through this, you can see there are no limits on the way you can ask questions in these forms. I'm going to hit finish. Now Hot Docs is doing what it does. It's assembling my documents. And two things are going on here. First, it's building the documents, taking all the answers I've given it. It always maintains all formatting. I've now got two formatted finished documents. In addition, I have an answer file which lists all the questions and all the answers. So if you've got a 50-page contract and you're responsible to review these things every time you generate a new one, you can scan through and flip through those pages on the screen in your hand, and the odds are occasionally your eyes are going to glaze over something because it's a lot of pages you've seen it a hundred times. Hot Docs increases your accuracy because we'll give you a list of all the variable content, just one list, all of it right there. Run your eyes down that one page and you've got it. So we're going to greatly increase your accuracy. Let's take a look at one of these documents. I generated two automatically, a power of attorney and a simple will. I downloaded the power of attorney, which is a little less interesting than the will. Let me open up the will. Boom, it opens up in Word just that quickly. And now I've got my formatted will. And that's how simple it is for Hot Docs to generate a document, whether it's a will or a contract. If it's a repetitive document that you do, Hot Docs is the solution. We're not vertical. We're not tied to healthcare, finance, legal. We do document assembly. We do it better than anybody else. So now that we've gone through the steps a user takes in creating a document, they get the hot docs, could be on their phone, could be on their tablet. They fill out an interview. The interview validates all of their answers and they produce a document. And if they ever want to see what they've done or go back and work on it again, we've got a complete interface. They can go back, see everything that's been done, who's touched it, what happened with it. But that's part of the story. The other part of the story is the day one operation. Day one, you need to put content into Hot Docs. I talked a bit about how Hot Docs would let you teach it what to do, from the very simple, which we do very well, to the very complex, which we also do very well. So now I've got a document in front of me, an employment agreement. In my employment agreement, I generate a few of these a month. I want to automate the process in Hot Docs. So to do that, I'm in Microsoft Word. You don't have to learn anything new. You already know how to use Microsoft Word. We add one button, the Hot Docs button, exposes this ribbon. If I want this to be a Hot Docs template, I hit the button that says Create Template. It asks me what I want to call it. I save it. I'm now on my template. Some content will be variable. Well. This employment agreement, that's not going to change. It's an employment agreement. Hot Docs, yep, this is going to be between us and whoever we hire. But Mr. Albert's here. He's going to change every time. So I click on variable field. It's a name. Replace it multiple times. And I replace it throughout the entire document. Now I have assurance that everywhere the name Greg Alberts appeared, 
that has been replaced and now that is a variable name. Now let's assume that I want name up here to appear as defined terms do commonly in US documents, US legal documents. So to do that I need it in all capitals. But in the rest of the document it would look silly. Hot Docs has that flexibility. You can walk into any variable and identify its exact formatting anywhere in the document. So here format like this all in caps. I can change the text, the color, the size, the font, anything and have Hot Docs automatically control that without instruction. Hot Docs will pick up the word formatting around the variable. But now in the top, it's all in capitals, down here it's not. So we've taught Hot Docs how we want this to appear. I scroll down here, US law recognizes two basic classes of employees, exempt employees and non-exempt employees. So in my form, I've got check boxes. Well, if you're using Hot Docs, you don't have to have check boxes or fill in the blanks or any of that. So now I can simply select content that may change and I click the if field and I say if the employee is exempt, then this shows up. If they're not exempt, it doesn't. Uh, but wait a minute. I got a block down here about not exempt. That's going to show up every time. I only want that to show up if the first one doesn't. Click if again. Hot Docs is so intelligent when I click the same button, it recognizes that this is right next to another if field, so it automatically offers to put an else statement in here. Okay, so if the employee is exempt, whoops, didn't mean to double click it, we publish this statement into the document. Else, otherwise, we put this statement into the document and now we're done with our logic. This is an example of a very simplistic bit of logic. We can build very complex recursive algorithms into this thing. As complex as you want to get, we can get just that complicated. We are really good at complicated here. So now I've done a couple of things. One last thing, I commented on how we never ever blow formatting. One of the more difficult things, even using word macros, is to maintain formatting within a formatted table. So here I've got a word formatted table. I'm going to delete the last line in the table. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make this a variable called job duties. I know it only shows up once, so I'm replacing it once. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new dialog box, new part of my interview. I'm going to go to my component manager. I'm going to create a new dialog. And I'm going to call this uh, job stuff. And in this, I'll put my job duties. And I'm going to tell the system, hey, this is going to repeat. So now I've done that. All I need to do is tell Hot Docs this particular field inside the table repeats and then it says okay does it repeat with a dialog or does it go out to a database and grab content based on a query? Nope, repeats with a dialog. Which one? Whoops, job stuff. Are we going to format it differently? Nope, not at all. We're going to let Word do its thing. So now I'm done with that. That's how easy it is to to build an interview and to build an intelligent interview and start to validate fields in the interview. Now I can save my document. I can test the assembly. When I do that, it says, "What's the name?" Well, let's uh, let's keep going with uh, Tony Stark's girl Pepper. So Pepper Potts. I I'm an engineer. That's a geeky movie reference. Uh, save the world. Keep Stark alive. Do everything. Hey, you know something? Hot Docs didn't ask me how many job duties are there. Hot Docs is intelligent enough to say, okay, you want to put in multiple job duties, put something in. And once I type something, then I can add another. And I can add another one ad nauseum, and Hot Docs will just deal with it. It knows how to count. It knows how to do very complex math. You can do things automatically, such as amortization schedules. Done with that. Now it's asking me, is this an exempt employee or not? We'll say yes, it's an exempt employee. Next. Gives me a summary. Says, hey, you got no unanswered questions. 
and not only can we validate questions, we can make questions mandatory, we can make them optional, we can put in pop-out helping dialog boxes, etc. So now I'm done. I'm not going to bother saving my answer file for my demo, but as I look at this, Pepper's name is in all capitals in the top, which is exactly what I asked for. Pepper's name is not throughout the rest of the document. My Word formatted table is correct, properly formatted by Word. I had to do nothing special for that. I have the exempt block in that I wanted. If I wasn't completely and utterly out of time on this, I'd continue. We'd finish off the document, a few more things to do. Please understand we are barely scratching the surface of what's possible with document management, document automation today. Lois? Thanks, Bart. Um, so a couple of questions have come in from our attendees, um, which I'll get you to answer in a second. If there are any other questions, please just type them into the question pane on your GoToMeeting panel. So first question for you, Bart. How long does it take to implement a hot docs solution? Hot docs for simple documents, and simple to hot docs has nothing to do with length. It has to do with the complexity of the intelligence behind the document. Generally, documents on the simpler side, and I use an example of wills and trusts, residential mortgage lending packages, these take a matter of hours to get put into hot docs to where a user can actually use them and you start generating documents. There certainly are documents out there with complex logic behind them where it can take a couple of days or more to get an individual document in but it really depends on what are the decisions that are being made and how complicated are the decisions. A lot of simple if-then decisions, no problem, no time at all. As we get more and more complicated, we're going to burn a little time. The average hot docs implementation is a couple of days. Fantastic, thank you. And we've got one final question. Um, what return on investment does document automation offer? Document automation, we've Oh gosh, I'm going to do it. We've documented, oh, sorry folks, we have numbers from our customers showing that the return on investment generally is within 100% in 9 to 11 months of implementation. So within the first year, you've got more money in your pocket than what you spent on hot docs simply from the time the efficiency and the control you've gained, that it's actually been cash positive for you. Most folks who look at this, the reaction I hear is, gee, we should have been doing this a while ago. Again, Hot Docs has been around for over 25 years. We have over a million customers globally for a reason. This is a very simple, very elegant solution to a problem that a lot of places don't think about. We've all got it. It's not something that's in the top of our mind. There is a tremendous return on the investment here, Lois, because the cost savings are immediate. You suddenly have, within days, your documents are far more accurate, up to 100% accuracy in, with some documents. Your documents are being produced much quicker. You've got immediate efficiency gains with your staff. So across the board, the ROI is quick and fast on this one. Thanks, Mar. Another couple of questions have actually come in, and we've got a couple of minutes, so you can potentially answer these ones too. Um, so somebody has asked if Hot Docs can pull information from a database. Absolutely. We do that all the time. The functionality to do such is out of the box, doesn't require anything special. So yes, Hot Docs plays well with others. We can pull information from one or more existing databases. Thanks. And then just the final question, can Hot Docs offer its assembly functions through web service interfaces or do interviews have to be filled interactively or through DB calls? Absolutely. I love that question. Being an engineer, I love it when my customers want to integrate the product with something. So yes, this is a service-oriented architecture. We have exposed with REST APIs every individual function of the product. So the answer to that is a resounding yes. I have customers around the globe who do exactly that with the product. Doesn't require anything special. As a final comment, Lois, our APIs are well documented. 
Absolutely. Okay, that's uh, all the questions we've had. It just remains to thank you, Bart, for presenting and to thank our attendees for taking the time to come along today. Thanks very much.